My name is Mary Kenevy. Well, I was just thinking actually the other day, and I think it's certainly going on 17 years now, which is quite a long time. Well, over that incredible span of time, really, it's been a very important part of um, my life and community in a way. And in terms of being down the road, I only live down the side of Conniscliffe Road. Um, it's a place that, funnily enough, many people who live in Darlington many, many years don't even know of its existence, even um, after 25 years of living near the town. But I came on various opening meetings all those years ago and realised I'd like to be part of it, and so put my um, name for this so one. I remember George Butiman, um, our chief engineer here, he suddenly produced from a dusty pile a membership form and who the dust up said, why don't you join us? And I thought, well, why not? And from that day, and I don't have my badge with me, which I should need it to have bring brought today, I forgot. But I've worn that badge quite proudly, actually, and being able to convey to visitors how special this remarkable piece of engineering is. 1904, the same date as my house was built, actually. And so we have another link there. And um, when it's actually in full beam operational mode, it is just a delight to be part of it and to see the synchronisation still good and true in 2024. How fantastic is that? And that's a testimony to our engineers, volunteer engineers and others, who do all that oiling, valving, of filling with oil and so on. And people like James who come along and give their time. Um, and growing expertise, growing skills. I mean, I've got a crib sheet here, and I'm, you can see how old it is and sort of a bit frayed, put together by a former member, Cedric, who actually put an incredible guidebook together, again, particularly on the technical aspects of steam in the mid 19th century and into the 20th century, and the uniqueness of this particular beauty here. Um, I sometimes refer to her as the majestic beam engine and she, she does have the majesty. And this crib sheet, full of little details about the cylinder aspects, the height, width, the fact that, which is the one I always get to make sure I know about, that this was actually built, constructed by the Teasdale brothers, assembled in Darlington Nisham Road, and designed originally by Glenfield Ken and Kennedy of Kilmarnock. That was way back in 1904. And remember the need for a pumping station and for an incredible um, beam engine like this. Cholera struck Darlington in 1831. So it was a very real medical crisis and one that an engine like this, purifying the water, helped to eradicate. And that was a draw to for a number of people who were joining the working community in Darlington in the mid 19th century, come to Darlington and work, you've got pure, you've got clean water. As indeed the fountains in the town. Recently reading a novel that actually featured one of the fountains by the Market Square. And I thought, my goodness, there you are. Was, and the engineers were taking in turns to go down and service them and make sure they were working. If they weren't working properly, what? They were soon told get down there and sort it out, which they did. So, yeah, and the community of people here is quite unique, who work so hard, I've already mentioned that. But you've also got, I think, to have your own oneness with and realise why you want to be here. And it's nothing to do with um, um, a grand cosmetic setup. As you look round, we're talking about an authentic building with authentic plaster coming off the wall here and there, and authentic needs of this mighty, sometimes referred to as a beast, Brad on here as a beast. I think she's got a great gentleness as well. My former job worked teaching English for 40 years or more, and been lovely to articulate with visitors when they come here and to point out why this beam engine is so special.
and it really is, not least of which. People like James who was doing this video, giving the time and effort to actually spread the word, hey, come and see this beam engine. We need the, the, um, we need the entrance fees and so on. To maintain the purchase of anthracite coal, which is not cheap, so that this engine can still keep running. I just want to add one thing, if I may, and that is we will get all the technical details and accuracies about the tonnage and all the rest of it of this machine. And, um, but I think it's important as well to remember the social context within which the workers have worked here and their families contributed, which a very lovely volunteer who passed away not long ago, Marianne Ward, and I, we worked in the cottage in Park, looking up um, postcards from the past, all sorts of ledgers done in beautiful cursive handwriting of how the workers were given very little time off and really quite relatively speaking low wages but there was a certain pride in working in this publication for this amazing machine and the, and the learning and the sometimes sleeping overnight if the boiler was playing up and so on just so they could sometimes three o'clock in the morning sort of time. but so Marion and I, was lovely, and she, her work contributed to this building, as indeed her husband Ivan, who's still alive, 89 years of age, former engineer, and really liked his contact here. Back to that bench here, I may say, sometimes when at the end of a steaming, I'd sit there, and um, there is a certain lovely atmosphere of serenity, when that machine is still going but slowly as it's being paced down and you have a sort of connection with it in a strange sort of way and the many a time I've sat and wrote some words of poetry and words to do with my own journal but we must remember that that it's more than just its working parts it's got a presence and it's a presence I've been very glad to be part of thank you